Hey friends, my name is Osama and in this video, I'm going to be talking about fission and fusion. You might vaguely remember these terms from high school physics class. Well, guess what? They are some of the most powerful reactions on our planet. Now, in my humble opinion, these two reactions are going to be necessary in the upcoming decades if you want to help advance humanity as well as save our planet from the effects of climate change. Well, if you're new here, this is the main focus of my channel. It's nuclear science and technology. In this video, I'll be sharing the differences between these two sources of energy. How is each one created? Why is one stronger than the other? What are the drawbacks and advantages that come with fission and fusion? Fun fact, our sun, which is powered by nuclear fusion, has been burning for over 4.6 billion years, and it has more than half its lifetime left. Now that's what I call fuel economy. Also, if all the lifetime supply of energy came from nuclear fission in your life, the spent fuel waste that it would accumulate would fit into the size of a soda can. That's what I call energy density. Okay, I'm gonna compare these to a fuel source that you probably use every single day, which is gasoline in your car. Now, gram per gram comparison uh, from uranium fission to that of gasoline is a difference of two million times more energy. And compared to gasoline to that of nuclear fusion, it's eight million times more energy. That is insane. Fusion is around four times more powerful than fission, and fission is two million times more powerful than gasoline. Now, let's jump into a, an average power plant size, which is around 500 megawatts. And say this 500 megawatt uh, plant was being refueled every single year, three different fuel sources, which is coal, uranium fission, and also hydrogen fusion. So coal, natural uranium, and also deuterium and tritium, which is the fuel source for nuclear fusion reactions. If you were to fuel a 500 megawatt plant for one whole year on coal, it would take up 21,000 rail cart loads of coal. That's a lot of coal. Now, if you compare that to uranium fission, it would only take up one rail cart load to, to fuel that 500 megawatt plant for one whole year. And lastly, for nuclear fusion, the, the fuel source deuterium and tritium, it would only take up one pickup truck worth of fuel, okay? And not even a pickup truck, it would, it would be 600 kilograms, which is a lot more than what a pickup truck can, uh, can haul. When you look at energy density, 21,000 rail cart loads of a natural resource that is polluting our earth and destroying our environment compared to one rail cart load of a fuel source that can be managed effectively, that can also be reprocessed, even more fuel. And lastly, 600 kilograms or less than a pickup truck worth of fuel source, which has 8 million times more energy than gasoline. And now we start to understand how where we source our energy from can really start impacting our, our environment and our planet. What's the main difference between fission and fusion? Fission takes place when you split a heavy atom, whereas fusion takes place when you fuse two lighter atoms. Okay, so they're, they're very, very different. Okay, but let's dive a little bit deeper. What's the main difference between fission and fusion? Well, fission takes place when you split a heavy atom, like uranium, plutonium, atoms that are located at the bottom of the periodic table, whereas fusion takes place when you fuse two lighter atoms. So atoms that are located on the top of the periodic table. Let's start with nuclear fission. Fission reactions take heavy atoms like uranium and they're split by energized particles called neutrons. All right, neutrons are kind of like bullets. When they hit this heavier atom, the atom splits and releases large amounts of energy. This energy is coming from the atomic bonds that are holding this atom together. This large amount of energy is released because the atomic bonds that are holding this atom together are broken. Several other neutrons, when, when, that's, when that atom's broken, are released and go on to hit other atoms of uranium and a chain reaction starts. So a continuous reaction, which exponentially increases. Now the question is, how is nuclear fission used to generate electricity? Once this immense energy is released from breaking these bonds, what takes place in a nuclear fission reactor, this energy can be used heat water creates steam and spin turbines. Chain reactions are really important in nuclear fission. And once these chain reactions are self-sustaining, so continually going on and on, the reaction goes into a phase called critical. And this is the phase in which majority of reactors across the world, they run in a, a critical state, okay? Okay, pretty simple. And the advantages of fission is that 
it could take place in room temperature. You don't need crazy environments like fusion where you need very, very, very hot environments uh, to sustain that reaction. So that's one of the benefits of nuclear fission. It can take place uh, in, in room temperature. And the struggle with nuclear fusion is that scientists are trying to research ways and to work around how, how you can maintain that reaction while being in that very, very hot environment. Nuclear fusion reactions are pretty much the opposite of nuclear fission reactions. Instead of splitting a heavier uh, nuclei, you're actually taking two lighter atoms and bringing them together to make them fuse. So this reaction, it takes place in really hot, intense heat environments like our sun, where the, the core of the sun is where fusion takes place, where nuclei come together and, and combine and produce massive amounts of heat and energy released in the, in the form of light light, heat, radiation, right? So it's a very, very, very powerful reaction. How does fusion take place? Fusion can take place with many different atoms in the periodic table, but right now scientists and researchers across the world are focusing on deuterium-tritium fusion. And the reason why is because deuterium-tritium fusion has the ability to produce that large amounts of energy at lower temperatures, which compared to other atoms, require a lot higher temperatures for atoms to fuse. In short, it's easier for that reaction to take place. Fusion reactor designs currently do exist, right? Like the Tokamak or the Stellarator. There's many different designs out there to go to the, through this process. And there's a bit of a race in the world right now to develop a self-sustaining reaction. Self-sustaining reaction meaning fusion ignition. That's when the amount of energy that is being produced is sufficient or sustainable enough to produce electricity. Okay, that's the end goal. We want to use fusion reactions to create electricity which can power entire nations. This takes time. This takes time. It takes research. It takes new designs. It takes science and technology engineering to, to progress to that level. Okay, so the fuel source that is used by nuclear fusion reactors, which is one of which is tritium. Tritium is a very rare isotope. It's not really abundantly found in nature. Uh, it's actually produced in nuclear fission power plants uh, like the Kandu reactor Canadian design. So one gram of deuterium tritium has the same energy as 11 tons of coal, okay? Now imagine having one drop, literally one gram of a fuel, having this potential to produce the same amount of energy as 11 tons of coal, which is very dirty natural resource that is very destructive to our environment when burned. And in fission technology, it's something that will facilitate fusion technology. It's very difficult for humans to jump from going from nothing to fusion. We need nuclear fission technology as a, as a step to fusion technology. Fusion technology hasn't really reached a point where it can be taken right off the market and start creating electricity. Uh, it has to progressively go through different stages of research and development for it to reach that stage. And like I said, ignition, that self-sustaining reaction is what the world is racing toward. There's projects across the world which are trying to optimize nuclear fusion reactions uh, and reactors to, to reach that stage. One of the hottest topics that I love talking about is uh, the ITER or the International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor. This is a collaborative effort from countries across the world which are pooling their resources to help build this, this research reactor. ITER is also known as The Way in Latin. This reactor is also planned to be build, built by 2025, so uh, it's quickly approaching that date. This research is being done to help us understand how this technology can be fully optimized for a one day fully scaled electricity producing fusion reactor. The ITER project will not develop a reactor that will produce electricity, rather they're in the first phase. They're trying to create a reactor that can facilitate a self-sustaining fusion reaction, reach that ignition. All right, so overall, there's no silver bullet that can save our planet, all right? We're all fighting a good fight. We need to continue building fission power plants. Fission technology is still amazing. It's, it's a great uh, method that we have to produce electricity for a large amount of people with very minimal waste production and zero greenhouse gas production. But we also need to invest in research and development for that next phase, nuclear fusion technology. Overall, I hope you found this video interesting. Um, I know I, to this day, find uh, nuclear fusion and fission reactions quite, quite interesting and fascinating topic to talk about. 
maybe in the comments below, let me know what other science or nuclear science related topics you're interested in learning about. I uh, would love to love to share. Uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Till next time, take care.